Good morning and welcome to our service on this, the eighth Sunday of Trinity. Let us pray. Generous God, you have given us our gifts and make them grow. Though our faith is small as a mustard seed, make it grow to your glory and the flourishing of your kingdom. Through Jesus Christ, our Lord. Amen. Let us confess our sins. Most merciful God, Father of our Lord Jesus Christ, we confess that we have sinned in thought, word and deed. We have not loved you with our whole heart. We have not loved our neighbours as ourselves. In your mercy, forgive what we have been. Help us to amend what we are and direct what we shall be, that we may do justly, love mercy and walk humbly with you, our God. Amen. Almighty God, who forgives all who truly repent, have mercy upon you, pardon and deliver you from all your sins, confirm and strengthen you in all goodness and keep you in life eternal. Through Jesus Christ, our Lord. Amen. Our reading this morning is taken from Matthew's Gospel, chapter 20. Then the mother of the sons of Zebedee came to him with her sons, and kneeling before him, she asked a favour of him. And he said to her, What do you want? She said to him, Declare that these two sons of mine will sit, one at your right hand and one at your left, in your kingdom. But Jesus answered, You do not know what you are asking. Are you able to drink the cup that I am about to drink? They said to him, We are able. He said to them, You will indeed drink my cup, but to sit at my right hand and at my left, this is not mine to grant, but it is for those for whom it has been prepared by my father. When the ten heard it, they were angry with the two brothers. But Jesus called them to him and said, You know that the rulers of the Gentiles lord it over them, and their great ones are tyrants over them. It will not be so among you. But whoever wishes to be great among you must be your servant, and whoever wishes to be the first among you must be your slave. Just as the Son of Man came not to be served but to serve and to give his life as a ransom for many. There is nowhere I would rather be at an event or a party or when entertaining guests than in the kitchen. Cooking, washing up or indeed making a brew. It's not that I'm a martyr to the cause, but I like to be practical. Do what I can, especially if it helps. I reckon for me it stems from this passage that you must be a servant. However, the part I don't want to be is great, which is the other side of the coin in what Jesus tells his disciples. I was ordained as a deacon some 19 years ago. It was a year of servant ministry. That is what priesthood is built upon, being the servant of all. The progression from deacon to priest is quite spectacular visually and internally as well as emotionally and spiritually. So how do we balance being a servant and not a slave? The answer is in choice. Choosing to serve others is being a servant in faith. Being a slave is when there is no choice. How can you be great and a servant Well, I know as a parent you always want the best for your children. Opportunities that come up, you want to be grasped without delay, just like the mother of the sons of Zebedee. There is a question about if it is right to ask or not. Also, just to note, the sons of Zebedee are grown men, not young children anymore. All this can be put to one side as there is a more important message in our reading from Matthew. That is, Jesus took an argument that was brewing amongst his disciples and turned it yet again into a time to teach. 
not a telling down, but more of, don't you think like that? Think like this. In our life, we often say that things can be life lessons, and let's face it, all of us, at the some stage, we've all had to make a decision that has turned out to be wrong. Yes, including referees of football matches, but let's not go there. So we are all too aware of the embarrassment of getting things wrong. Jesus takes that mistake as an opportunity to turn it around to teach a lesson. If we are too afraid to make mistakes, then we may never actually ever learn. This is true of our faith, asking the questions that we need to, no matter how embarrassing it may be, in order to understand Jesus better and enable our faith to grow. Jesus never wants us to see, never wants to see us hurt through making mistakes. But when we make them through faith, we have the ability to see what we have learned. After all, if you hit your head on a closed door, you would learn, hopefully quickly, that in order not to bang your head again, you need to open the door. Lessons learned through faith enable us to grow in understanding and maturity. If we find behind the scenes getting things done, we also have to be prepared, if asked by Jesus in faith, to come to the front and take the lead. In faith, you cannot be great, just great. And you can also not choose just to be the servant. We need to be both. As we learn in life, let us allow Jesus to teach us through our mistakes in faith taking them seriously, but not to heart, where they can in time form a barrier between us and God. But take them as Jesus means them to be, to give us a chance to start again, to renew our faith, to grow and to learn not to make the same mistake again. Let us pray. Lord God, through your grace, we are your people. Through your Son, you have redeemed us in your spirit. You have made us your own. We pray for the church in the world. We ask you to make our hearts respond to your love. We pray for the world around us, for the needs of our brothers and sisters, we ask you to make our lives bear witness to your glory in the world. We pray for those in need of your healing spirit. Bring wholeness to them. Make our wills eager to obey and our hands ready to heal. We give you thanks for those who have transcended from this world to your glorious kingdom. Make our voices one with all your people in heaven and on earth. Thanks be to thee, my Lord Jesus Christ, for all the benefits that we have received, for all the pains and insults that we have borne in your name. You are our most merciful Redeemer, our friend and our brother. May we know you more clearly, love you more dearly, and follow you more nearly, day by day. Amen. We join together in the Lord's Prayer. Our Father, who art in heaven, hallowed be thy name. Thy kingdom come, thy will be done, on earth as it is in heaven. Give us this day our daily bread, and forgive us our trespasses, as we forgive those who trespass against you. And lead us not into temptation, but deliver us from evil. For thine is the kingdom, the power, and the glory for ever and ever. Amen.
The peace of God, which passes all understanding, keep your hearts and minds in the knowledge and love of God and of his Son, Jesus Christ, our Lord. And the blessing of God Almighty, the Father, the Son, and the Holy Spirit be upon you this day and always. Amen. Amen.